In the world of Tony Soprano, trust is as fragile as glass. Betrayed by his own, Carlo Gervasi's testimony could be his downfall. With his empire under threat and his family caught in the crossfire, the pressure mounts. With everything at stake, could the unthinkable become a reality? Cooperating with the feds? Could loyalty falter under the weight of survival? By the end of this video, you might see Tony Soprano in a light you never expected. Tony faced the real threat of spending the rest of his life behind bars. The key to his potential downfall? Carlo Gervasi's testimony. You talk to Mink again? It's Carlo. He's gonna testify. Now, Carlo wasn't just any member of the crew. He managed the ports for the Sopranos. His involvement gave him first-hand knowledge of numerous illegal activities. Everything from interstate theft, hijacking and carjacking, to fencing stolen property, and even international schemes like money laundering and theft. But that's not all. After Vito Spadafore fled and was killed, Carlo also took charge of construction operations. He's gotta go! This opened up a whole new can of worms involving bid rigging, extortion, and various frauds like no-show jobs. Pretty serious stuff, right? Now here's where it gets even more intense. Oh! Carlo knew details about the murder of Jack Massarone. Oh, look at that. Which could directly implicate Tony in a conspiracy to commit murder. Remember the impact of Jimmy Patrill's testimony against Johnny Sack? Carlo's potential testimony was positioned to be just as devastating for Tony. And what about the aftermath of Phil Leotardo's death and Carlo flipping sides? What if he flipped? Who? Carlo? Well... This made Tony's position even more unstable. In terms of legal ramifications, a RICO predicate could mean digging up crimes from the past 10 years. Any of Tony's soldiers flipping could lead to his indictment for any number of crimes, like Phil's murder. I should get a 60-day supply of the planet. The New York families had every reason to worry about Tony possibly flipping, which could expose more of their operations. They likely wanted him gone to avoid this risk. To put it simply, if we consider the on-screen crimes and the additional off-screen activities Carlo could testify about, it seemed almost certain Tony would be convicted on major charges. The evidence was overwhelming. Carlo's defection could have triggered a domino effect, endangering the entire Soprano crew. And if Carlo starts talking homicide... When indicted, Tony, ever desperate to cling to his lifestyle and avoid prison, would likely pull out all the stops. Remember Junior's trial? Tony might attempt something similar, like trying to influence a juror. Listen, Danny, we just want you to know how glad we are a guy like you was on that juror. That mob thing. His attorney, Neil Mink, who's been in Tony's corner for years, would be gearing up for a major payday, prepared to defend Tony no matter how long it takes. Speaking of time, Considering the typical duration of RICO investigations and trials, Tony's legal battle could easily stretch over several years. With pre-trial motions and various delays, we might not have seen Tony's trial start until around late 2009 or 2010. Not like we haven't envisioned this day. No, no it's not. And if convicted, Tony wouldn't be starting his sentence until 2012 with no shot at parole until 2032 at the earliest. That's a long time, right? Neil Mink famously said, trials are there to be won. Trials are there to be won. Which basically sounds like a cash register ringing. Win or lose, Mink would likely drain Tony's resources with endless appeals. It makes you think, maybe Carmela would have been better off if Tony had met his end at Holston's, financially speaking. Hey. hey! Lastly, let's not forget the financial pressures of legal defense. Tony and his crew had their ways of making money, like bust-outs. You remember Dave Scatino, right? I wouldn't do anything to insult you. Our kids go to the same school together. But when it's time to pay your lawyers, suddenly you find yourself on the receiving end of those schemes. These lawyers are taking my internal organs. A million bucks for this trial. Now here's an interesting twist. What if after his arrest, Tony was left to stew for a few hours before Agent Harris showed up to chat? Anthony Soprano. What are you doing in my backyard? Harris. Having seen the downfall of Tony's closest allies at Phil's hands and knowing the backstories with Tony's family, might have tried to convince Tony that his fight was no longer worth it. Could Harris have persuaded Tony to give up and walk away from everything? Let's find out! Damn, you're gonna win this thing. Could you picture our fearless mob boss Tony 
flipping to save his own skin? Well, let's unpack this scenario and see what might push him to such a desperate move. First up, consider Tony's nature. Maybe we can motivate you to testify. Well, why don't you get the kumquats out of your mouth and get to the point, because I don't know what you're talking about. Known for his selfishness and hypocrisy, Tony's ultimate goal has always been self-preservation. Don't forget, I'm a strict Catholic. <laughs> Imagine him facing a lengthy prison sentence, say, 20 years in the can. The thought alone of making grilled cheese on a radiator or missing out on his lavish lifestyle would be unbearable. You f***ing addict. <sighs> He's the guy who'd betray anyone to avoid that fate, no matter the talk of honor and the old ways. Guys today have no room for the penal experience, so everybody turns government witness. Despite his bravado about loyalty, Tony's mental state and his fear of becoming an average nobody in witness protection could twist his arm into becoming an informant. He'd initially fight the charges, trying every trick in the book, but once he saw no way out, he'd flip without a second thought. Throughout The Sopranos, Tony often chose his own needs over the mob's rules. By season six, his actions hinted at desperation. He shared sensitive info about Arabs with the feds, initially seeming like a burst of patriotism, but really, it was all about covering his back amid his gambling issues and strained relationships. Two Arabs. You think there's a chance they could be, uh, I don't know, al Qaeda's? Now, faced with Carlo's damning testimony and the walls closing in, Tony's fear of prison and losing his power could make him turn in a heartbeat. The feds would definitely use him to dismantle the NY mob. They'd likely offer him a sweet deal, too. Think minimal sentence, a new start, and some level of comfort, similar to what Sammy Gravano got. In the scenario where Tony flips, it's not just about saving his own skin. It's about striking back at those who wronged him. Could you imagine? Tony helping to lock up his own crew and various shady politicians would be a massive win for the feds. They'd target big fish in NYC, and Tony, knowing who the murderers were, would be a gold mine of information. I'd say it's a safe assumption that you may have finally run out your string here in North Jersey. Remember, Tony's survival instinct is strong. He's always been more about personal gain than mob loyalty. Whether it's from fear of a bleak prison life or the collapse under legal pressures, Tony turning a rat isn't just a possibility. It fits right into his character arc of self-preservation at any cost. You just remembered that. Yeah. Thanks. What do you think? Could our Tony really turn rat to dodge a lengthy sentence, or would his mob loyalty hold up to the end? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Guys today have no room for the penal experience, so everybody turns government witness. If you're as intrigued as we are by the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the mob world, then you won't want to miss our full video on the Sopranos actors turned criminals in real life. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay wise and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.